Circle Craft Podcast. With my my guest today is Ms. Mike. But dude, you're um you're a popular man. I feel like I did not realize how many people and how many similar circles we were in. But yeah, good morning, man. Good morning to you. I appreciate you having me on. Um yeah, you know, when it comes down to it, what I do as far as the living is concerned, I usually try and stay behind the scenes. Um, I'm very, very private. And for me to be out there in the open, uh, even though the position I have is kind of out in the open, um, definitely new to me. But yeah, I've been very lucky to meet a lot of people within a ton of different industries. And, um, you know, very lucky to meet people that are in an industry that I actually enjoy and is a hobby of mine, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, before we kind of dive in a little bit more about um, your background and like some other recent ventures that you've gotten yourself into, um, well, I have a couple icebreaker questions, which is kind of like one of the, the classic things that I've always done on the podcast, which are just off the wall Q and A's, you know, but, uh, right. but yeah, well, you ready, man? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. So um, this is a good one, uh, just because uh, like I was just saying a minute ago, uh, warm, trying to warm up, dude, I, you know, trying to get all the frogs out, especially from the morning and stuff. But uh, what is a song that you love that might surprise people? Oh, my God. Um, it can be embarrassing, man. If you want, I mean, just just go for it. You know, to be honest with you, I I talk about this all the time. My father, when I was twenty one, I was helping cleaning out the house and the attic and stuff, and brushing along these boxes, I came across these vinyls, and I'm like, oh shit! I'm like, you know, vinyls, and he's like, yeah, you know, um, and then I'm looking through them, and I'm like, dude, why is your name on the vinyl? And he's like, well, I cut some records before. And I'm like, dude, I'm 21 years old, and this is the first time I'm ever hearing that you have your own (laughs) records. And he's like, yeah, you know. And then my dad um, played in a bass guitar, and he played in a band, and they cut some – they were like a Beatles cover band, so they cut some records. um, And um, he had polio as a kid and survived it, so he had some after effects with his hands, so he couldn't play the uh, bass guitar anymore. Mm -hmm. And so he kind of just dropped it and never – never um you know touched it again and kind of just forgot about it because it kind of was a sore spot in him so uh, coming from a musical family i cannot tell you a name of a song okay i i listen to music i absolutely love music Mm -hmm. but i am the worst my wife could tell you every lyric to a song (laughs) so you know it's like man like uh, but to be honest with you uh, i mean i love all the classics i mean i'm a love the beatles um I mean, I like Elton John. Um, yeah. I like rap. I like R and B. But man, like the one song that gets me all the time, and I think people would like be like, "Okay, this guy wears a suit and you know a tie." And dude, "Enter the Sandman" is one yeah. of my favorite songs. Anytime I hear that song, I literally either want to run a marathon or go, <laughs> you know, take yeah. over the world. You know? Yeah, dude. That's um. So on the on the compass of that, uh, or I don't, well, I don't know what the correct phrasing is, but um, I, I was looking at it like a, a hierarchy of like of like football, like for college stadiums and stuff like that, and and still um, I was I think it's Virginia Tech, and that used to be like their big mm-hmm. opening song would it'd be Into the Sandman, and you know, and it would just be like a, almost a whole event within itself at the start of their games and stuff, but it's still iconic, like it's still like one of the number one like football entry intros in a stadium that just yeah you know, but like you said it's a it's a killer song i mean you know just in well, general. At, at, the, at, at the risk of losing listeners and getting hate mail i am a patriot fan oh, so yeah. <laughs> going to patriot games um just hearing that song in the stadium and all the people just fuck going crazy yeah, for man. it it dude it's just nuts it's yeah. nuts. it's one of the best songs absolutely absolutely but to say and dude i think I think Patriot fans have have gotten a little bit of a break because you guys are having a rough season this year, so rough couple of seasons. But I think it'll you know it'll, it'll get back on track at some point soon. It, yeah, it's funny that um, we're obviously in the casino. We're on a group chat, and um, so the Patriots are just in town not this week, but last week playing the Raiders. Mm-hmm. And so the group chat was like, "Hey, anyone got any high rollers coming in for the Patriot game?" And I, if, crickets from me. Wow. I didn't want to say a word. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And then like everyone's like, "Yeah, I got a few in." I no, no. And then I just knew it was coming. Malucci, how about you? <laughs> and it's like. Nah, I think all my Patriot fans are <laughs> hiding right now. <laughs> hey, man, it's all right. It's all right. That's that. that that's what di- uh, dictates a a real fan and a bandwagon fan. <laughs> you gotta... Hey, hey look, grow, 
growing 25 minutes uh, growing up 25 minutes from foxborough yeah. i mean i went to plenty of games i was going there when they were terrible you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah and when when our season tickets were like 700 dollars for the season for two wow. and then we started winning super bowls and you know it was just a great <laughs> run you know yeah i mean i'm gonna say it's still one of the most like recognizable runs and just still the animosity of other fans you know obviously will will always linger from some of those games too so yeah, man. and it's fine. Hate, hate fuels, you know. Exactly. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm good with it. Exactly. All right. So uh, another, no, next question is: um, describe the most awkward, fo- uh, the most awkward photograph that you have ever taken. Ooh, and you know this after we've been talking for the past couple yeah. weeks. I just started getting into photography. So, you know, learning this beast has just been crazy. And yeah. thank God I got people that I can bounce ideas off of. Um, shoot. I, I think there was one time and um, I was taking a photo um, at the casino and um, uh, and literally it was a picture of one of my guests. And in the background, you can see someone that I'm working with picking their nose. <laughs> and I, I, <laughs> and I, I used that as blackmail for a while. Um, and then me and that coworker came to terms. And um, uh, let's just say I came out of that deal on top. There you go. Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, dude. That's awesome. I guess I, ma- I made an offer you couldn't ref- yeah. refuse. <laughs> All right. So um, last question. And this is, again, this is like this is a little bit of a two-point question. Uh, Two part question, and the uh, first part is: What's a? Is there any specific word that you just absolutely despise or like hate? It can just be, doesn't even have to be like something specific. Just yeah. maybe like the sound of, of it. Maybe maybe you don't want to say it. You know, we can mute, we can limit that part. Yeah, no, I'll say it, and I know I say it. You know, yeah. and there's always a there's a reason why I'm saying it. Yeah, and um, uh, my my father used to say whatever. Uh, he used to hate that word, so I would continually say that. But I think you know one of my f- the words I hate the most is yup. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I'll sit there and I'll write a text message to somebody or like you know, and I need an answer. And it's like I'm trying to get feedback. And in this day and age, you know, I, I mean, I'm a little older, so I grew up with phone calls. I grew up with personal mm-hmm. interactions. Mm-hmm. So I mean, when you're in front of somebody or you're on a phone with somebody, you can see their body language, you can hear their tone. Um, you know, and same with a phone call, you can't see them, but you can hear their tone. You can see how you know you can see how the conversation is going. But you'll write like a paragraph, and and the next thing you know, it's like, yup, like that's the yeah. response you get. And it's like, bro, like I took time out of my day to write this. I'm waiting for an answer and all you got is yup. Yeah, that is like uh, that is like one of those things too. like any type of one word response to like a fleshed out like information wise type thing, you know, and then that's all you get is it absolutely irritating. Uh, but yeah, I yeah. guess yeah. I'm like, yup. Yeah. Like I literally want to write another paragraph saying, dude, answer my <laughs> effing question. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm the same way. I think, yeah. But to say, I, I very much am the same thread on that. But to say it's like, it's very frustrating, especially if it's like, again, like a very specific response or someone or a question, et cetera. And it's, it's always frustrating. But to say, if I, if I know I can't respond fully, I've, I've gotten better and I'll just say like, Hey, I can't respond at this moment. I'll, I'll get back with you in just a moment or I'm driving or something like that. But yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So with that being said, what is the, what would you say is the proper punishment for people who say, for people who respond with yep liberally? I mean, I want, I want to delete their contact yeah. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah. to be honest with you, <laughs> but you know, I get it. People like, you know, I, I, I can't expect people to be me yeah. and you know, and relay and relate like I do, you know, so you got to kind of give people the benefit of the doubt, but normally I'll be like, yup, what? Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, that's something I think for me personally, that's been difficult in terms of like having like a, you know, again, it, it can be anything in terms of like feedback or responding and stuff like that. And it's, I, I've kind of had a difficulty of comprehending that people don't maybe correlate or, you know, break down or process things the same way as me. So it's kind of like been one of those things where I'm like, kind of like, you know, biting your tongue at times because you don't want to go full, full bore and say something. But, you know, some people are kind of just different age, I guess. Right, right, right. And if this, and after this airs, if the homies thought responding to me is, yup, there's going to be some issues. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I was about to say, hey man, that's that's when you start busting the camera out and and waiting for those those special moments and capturing. Oh some yeah, more. I, I, hey. I'm a Scorpio, so I, you know I, I take things to heart, and I may not, you know, get my revenge now, but it's ten years from now you're gonna get it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So, moving forward with the podcast, um, again a little bit. Of, uh, we'll go in a little bit more about you, and then you also have a new project as well as your current day job and work and stuff Correct. like that. You have a uh, Zero Legion, and so we'll talk a little bit about that as well, and kind of the the background of that. And you've had a couple of drops recently as well. So, yep. but yeah, let's um, I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit better and a little bit of your background. So yeah, um, when I was a kid, um, I played multiple sports in high school and one in college. And, um, you know, but my, my parents, and it's funny, we talk about this because today's a pretty special day. Mm -hmm. Um, my brother had passed away in 89 and about five minutes from, um, our house and today's his birthday. That's kind of why it's special. Um, there was a bowling alley that he used to go down and bowl in, um, you know, all the time. And, you know, after my brother had passed away, my father was a, a CEO of a pen company. Uh, and, you know, he spent a lot of time overseas and away from the family. So with me being the only child, my dad decided that he wanted to kind of do something different to where he can spend a little bit of time with me. Um, and so he ended up buying that bowling alley because it's something my brother loved. Mm -hmm. So, um, that led into me not only playing three, uh, you know, sports in high school and in college, but I also started bowling um, as a young age. And luckily enough, um, it was actually fun and I enjoyed it. And I was able to bowl at a high, uh, you know, level. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was about 10, 12 years old, we started going to this tournament um, in Las Vegas over Christmas and mm -hmm. Christmas was always a tough time for my family um, because of my brother's passing that they wanted to get away. So this was the biggest junior tournament in the country. And every time I would go out, I do very, very well. And it kind of put us in Vegas and I, you know, my dad loved the nightlife business and I started being in a casino at a young age and I was like, Oh, you know, this is kind of cool, you know? And I, you know, started seeing like where this career path could eventually go. I mean, my idea was I was going to play professional baseball the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously you need something to fall back on. So fast forward, um, to when I was like 21, um, actually it was like 19, um, years old, um, I went off to play college baseball um, in, uh, I was supposed to go to Providence College, they have dropped their baseball team, so I ended up going up to Southern Maine to play baseball, and, you know, things just didn't work out for me up in Maine, so I came back down to Rhode Island to play baseball, but at a young age, I was taught that, hey, dude, you have to work, you have to contribute to the family, you have to make some money. So we had a place called uh, Twin, uh, well, it was Lincoln Greyhound Park, so they had dog track and they also had uh they ended up putting in slot machines so it was a really tough job to get into but you know luckily you know i knew somebody and well, my family knew somebody and i was able to get in there to start working as a attendant to pay out like jackpots and also supervise technicians when they had to work on machines mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse me so i um was like to do this casino business is actually kind of cool, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, well, if I can parlay this into the fact that I go to Vegas all the time and I see Vegas, the, the mindset is to learn as much as I can in this casino business. And if I ever have an opportunity to go to Vegas, I would go to Vegas. And, um, you know, luckily enough, um, I worked in that, that business for, you know, say five years and in that five years the casino that i worked at was bought and then they did a huge renovation and so we went from like like 15 slot machines to 400 slot machines all the way up to 2500 slot machines and in the time i always you know uh believed in the fact that the only way you can be good at your job is if you know how to do everyone else's job. Mm -hmm. So starting off as a gaming attendant, I ended up going into the cage. I was a cage uh, cage supervisor. So my job in the cage was, you know, every cage that was there, I would, um, one, take care of all the tellers that worked there. So I'd, I'd go to the money room, I'd pick up, you know, a lot of money, and I would issue them out 52000 I think it was $550, 
And, you know, when they would need increases, I had a safe in the cage. I would increase them in, in uh, their monies and stuff like that. So it, it taught me how to learn the interior and like the background scenes of the money room and all that other stuff. So then I went, you know, worked in the money room. Uh, then I came out as a cage manager. Then I went on the casino floor as a gaming manager. Uh, gaming supervisor and then when we did the expansion um we had this thing um they opened up a department called player development mm -hmm. now at the time there was a movie uh or a, sh a tv show that was out called casino and you know the montecito and there was a, a character sam marquez and she was a executive casino host and like i was watching that all the time and i'm like oh shit like this is like a cool job and that's what player development was. And they had four spots. Um, two of the spots went to um, uh, two gentlemen that came from Mohegan Sun. And then our boss came from Mohegan Sun. And then the, fourth, the third spot was filled by um, the uh, customer service director that worked there for a long time at Twin River. And then um, I ended up getting the fourth spot. And I was like, oh, this is like a really cool opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it gave me an option to learn the learn the guests, build relationships with the guests. And, you know, luckily where we were, we were very much a, con a convenient spot. And with 4,700 slot machines and, you know, a really nice steakhouse and other places you can eat, it was very popular because literally we were right off the highway. So, you know, I was like, this is a perfect position for me. Now... Um, I did that for a long period of time, built a lot of great relationships. And, you know, as I was, when I was younger bowling in Vegas, um, I met my future wife um, at a young age, about 15 years old. And so we ended up connecting um, later on in life. And because there was a huge gap in between the time that we met and talked and then, you know, I went off um, college, she did her own thing. Mm -hmm. And then right around like 26 years old, I was like, man, like I'm ready to do something different. And um, as much as I love the casino, it was like, okay, I felt like where I was at in Rhode Island, it's, you know, it's very much like you get stagnant in a position. So I was like, shit, you know, I might as well just, you know, I always wanted to serve and I took a few, I started getting in the police um, route and um, I tested for um, four different departments, all four departments. I ended up getting, you know, to the end and I was put on a list and two of the departments they were hiring. It always felt like they were hiring two cops and I was the third. OK, because those two yeah. people ended up they were lived in the town. So they got special uh, they got extra points and they got hired. And then the other um, the same thing that happened. They were hiring one cop. I was third on the list. And, you know, so I was just sitting there waiting and waiting. And then one day, like I was on my space and, you know, screwing around. And, you know, um, Christina, my wife, um, she posted something that she was coming home from a tournament in Fresno. And so I just, you know, out of the blue was like, Hey, you know, I know you got a long ride. Do you want to keep, you want me to keep you company? And, um, she was like, sure. So I called her and, you know, we spoke for like five hours, you know? And so, um, we got off the conversation like, Hey, you know, if, you know, if anything was ever to lead or go in the future, you know, we'd be willing to maybe see where that took us. Mm -hmm. And, um, six months later, I, um, I texted her. I said, hey, I'm out of the relationship I'm in. I'm going to come to Vegas. I'm going to stay at the Palms. Um, do you want to hang out? She's like, well, that's, you know, coincidence because I'm out of the relationship too. And yeah, let's hang out. And so we hang out. And at the end of the trip, it was like, hey, we, there's something here. We need to figure out what's going on. And I was like, well, I'm in the, I'm trying to get on the police academy. So if you want to come out to Rhode Island, you know, and you want some change, I'd love to have you. And that was the decision we ended up making. And she moved to Rhode Island, and Rhode Island's just different than Vegas. I mean, yeah. you know, someone who, you know, if you want to go have, get food at 11 o'clock at night, good luck. You yeah. know, we're Vegas. You could go have a steak dinner. You could go have eggs. You could go have tacos. You could have anything. So it was kind of a culture shock for her. And, you know, I respect my wife. She was like, hey, like, the job's out here. I'm making good money in Vegas. You know, the money's not here, and I don't expect you to pay my bills. So the the mindset was that she would go back and I would send in some resumes to a couple places. And um, I reached out to one of my contacts at Caesars Entertainment. And she's like, dude, you'd be awesome in Vegas. Send me your resume. 
And within like a day or two, I was contacted by Caesars Entertainment. And the following week, I had, um, you know, the vice president of um, uh, marketing reach out to me and say, hey, we want to set up a phone interview with you. And so I did... Um, I was also a finalist. This is right when Cosmo was coming out. Mm -hmm. I had sent the resume in there. I had an uh, interview with them. And, you know, based on the whole process, like the Cosmo skipped, like they literally, I had a Skype interview. I was like, I'll fly out there. They're like, no, we can do everything over Skype. And they literally missed three of my, my interviews. So I'm like, this is a, sh you know, this is a shit box place. Like, why yeah, am yeah. I going to come work for a place like this? Caesar's totally different story. Called me 15 minutes before. And, you know, um, I was uh, led to call into a group call, and when I um, called in, I had a vice president of marketing for Paris, Bally's, and Planet Hollywood, and then a VP over at Rio and Caesars. And so, um, I hear as soon as I click in, I hear one of them say, "Man, you hear his accent?" And they're <laughs> like, "Yeah, man, I love it." You know, so I did not pronounce one R the whole time, and I had to say words that I didn't even shouldn't even have been saying just so I can use my accent to my advantage. Yeah, yeah. And so that whole interview went really, really well. And, you know, right, you know, me, I'm kind of forward. I kind of know what to do. And as soon as that interview was done, I emailed them both. I said, I look forward to working with you. Let me know when I can start. And, you know, they come back, oh, oh, oh you know, it was a big company. We kind of, you know, um, yeah. you know, things run a little bit slow here. So bear with us. And, uh, but I was ready to leave, you know, and my, you know, my future wife had already went back to Vegas. So I wanted to get out here as fast as possible. So, um, about three days later, I'm walking into the gym and, you know, the VP calls me and says, Hey, you know, this is so-and-so, you know, I, I hope you remember me. I said, yeah, you're my next boss. He goes, well, I'm glad to hear that. He's like, when can you be in Vegas? I said, can you give me a week? And he's like, you just need a week. I said, dude, I'm ready. And so I packed <laughs> up, I packed up my shit and. You know, uh, Christina flew back out and um, we drove cross country to Vegas. And, um, you know, that's led me into the uh, casino business at uh, with Caesars Entertainment. My office was at uh, Paris and Bally's. And I ended up moving my office after my probationary period was up over to Planet Hollywood. And so, you know, I've been in the casino business since I was 18, 19 years old. And it's been an absolute treat. I do love it you know, a hundred percent. And, um, you know, but the bittersweet was that, you know, a couple of weeks after I had a few of my guests that I knew from Rhode Island, one was the chief of police of the department that I was trying to get on. He came out for a bachelor party. Actually, this was like about six months later. And he's like, Hey man, he's like, dude, we were, we were about to hire you. Um, literally once we found out, like, um, we tried getting a hold of you, probably two months after we did the hiring process because we had someone, you know, um, uh, retire. And he's like, would you ever come back to Vegas? I'm like, dude, listen, I mean, would you ever come back to Rhode Island? And I'm like, dude, this is where I'm at. You know, I appreciate the opportunity, but, you know, as much as I would love being an officer with you, I, I'm here and I'm here to stay, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's what that's kind of what led me into the casino and out to Vegas. Yeah. So, and how old were you when you like officially accepted the job and you and your wife made the, 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 the trek back. That's I a long do, drive too. To, it was 2,700 miles, man. And it oh. was brutal. And we took the Northern route. And, um, so I think, I think it was 26. Yeah. Um, I was 26 when I came out, which was crazy because, you know, executive host positions, it's not easy to get in. People always ask me, how do you get into, um, uh, your position. I'm like, well, you got to be a casino host first. Like, well, how do I become a casino host? Well, you have to be a casino host. And it's like, okay, well, that makes no sense. It's really difficult. The companies, you have to make sure that you have relationships with these guests because you're assigned to it. You're a dollar amount to them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I like to say they pay you for what you can bring them and they continue to pay you for what they would lose if you left and went somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, and most of the executive hosts that I worked with, you know, when I came into Paris and Bally's, I mean, I think the closest one to my age was maybe like 33, 34. So I was oh, wow. relatively young um, doing it. But I've always been young in positions. I've always hung out with the older crew and and all that other stuff. So it was easy for me to adapt, but a little bit of a culture shock because, you know, we had some really good players that could gamble some money at, at you know, Twin River. But, you know, when you're looking at a guy that's, you know, has a fifteen thousand dollar average bet on blackjack and you know thirty six thousand average on dice 
and you know a fifty thousand dollar average on baccarat you know i mean that's people's salary per year yeah. and they're betting that every hand it's just like damn like this is the big leagues yeah which is yeah. huge but i said that's that's uh, just a whole different concept or you know you know just a, just seeing that in person i guess is, is pretty it's pretty wild it opens your eyes, man. It's it's amazing because Rhode Island's small. You know, it's like, you know, uh, it's 45 minutes from like um, north to south and, you know, 35 minutes from, you know, west to east to the coast. And, um, you know, so it's like, you know, we get that small brain mentality. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm so grateful for leaving as much as I miss it and love it. Um, you know, home is home and, you know, but Vegas is my new home and I'm so grateful to be able to see what I've been exposed to, which is huge. Yeah, yeah. So from from there, what was like your next stop, or like what was the the next the next thing that you stepped into on that on that side of the side of the map? So it, it's crazy. Like executive hosts could go from making forty thousand a year, okay, um, all the way up to a hundred uh, to a, a million a year. So sure. it's like I was I was in a position where it doesn't it, you don't go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you you you're, you're database your book dictates what you get paid okay gotcha, so gotcha. okay you, so right so in a hierarchy like you know exec some executive hosts like you know some some companies have um executive hosts they have casino hosts executive hosts um directors of play development vice presidents of play development and some just have executive hosts that you know they just have one title and they don't break it into four sections so i used to deal with a, a host that was at the win and you know i got a phone call one day from my boss and he's like hey i need you to go down and settle a, a credit line for me so and so is coming to make a payment and so I came down and they gave me the check and it was a check written out by Caesars Entertainment and it was a $300,000 check. Oh, smokes. You know what I'm saying? Like this person on one of their commissions made 300000 and they were paying off their $300,000 credit line. So it's like how much money are you actually making as an executive host? To be able to have a three hundred thousand dollar credit line, so I mean, basically, my main idea was, or my mindset is that, you know, at Caesars, I was only allowed to deal with three hundred people. So the way they do it is, you know, so say I get my first year through my belt, and then I get my second mm-hmm. year through my belt. So now I've built up a book of business, and so January first comes around. Um, planning and analysis, they pull Mike Malucci's list, and they're like, hey. Um, it, you have 650 people assigned to you, okay? Um, we need to drop 350 of them, and you need to start the year off with 300 of them. So that 300th person obviously has, they do it by average, has like an average of what they could lose per trip. Mm-hmm. So say say that number is, let's say, 500, okay? The goal is the following year I build up enough players and add them to my book of business that when I get back to January 1st and planning analysis pulls my list, that that 500, okay, ends up being 600, okay? So now I still have 300 people and my list got bigger as far as play is concerned, not bigger as far as volume is concerned, but now now I build that, la- my my lowest player is a higher level than it was the year before gotcha. and then each year you want to you want to raise that bar raise that bar raise that bar and then you know um i'm very lucky like caesars was very good to me and um you know uh and now at circa and the d and golden gate um you know <sighs> most people would leave to go to another property and be like, Hey, you know, um, I'm at Caesars and I've been paid this the last five years. And, you know, they're in situations where maybe they're not given raises or maybe they're not paying the way they should pay. I'm going to go try MGM. And then you, then you, you know, uh, reach out to someone at MGM and say, Hey, I'm looking to jump ship. You know, what are you guys offering? Well, what can you give us? Well, here's my 300 players. Not only do the 300 players I have, but everyone else that was dropped off my list, I know. So my database that I have accumulated is, is, 
equals X amount of dollars. Oh, okay. Well, you know, how's this dollar amount? Well, I'm really looking for a little bit higher. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll pay you that. So like people will jump ship and kind of go from one place to another. So like, Hey, I'm going to pay you for what you bring in and I'm going to continue to pay you because I've built relationships with people. I mean, you know, life is all about relations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if someone finds out that I'm no longer at, you know, Caesars anymore and I'm down at Circa, they're going to be like, man, like, fuck, every time I come out, I love hanging out with Malucci. Why am I going to go to Caesars? I'm going to go down to Circa. I'm going to hang with my boy. You know, I'm going to hang with the people, like the person that's been good to me. So, you know, that's kind of how that goes. Yeah. So very much on a personal personality and then relationship basis, and including so, and they, I guess everyone really looks and invests in that. that that's, that's a pretty cool aspect of the job too. It's not so much about experience. It's more, well, it is about experience, but it's also about what you bring to the table and, you know, who else you, you know, that comes and values your relationships. Right. The experience is, listen, I'm not selling Mercedes, you know, I'm not selling air conditioners. I'm selling hopes and dreams, mm-hmm. you know? So if you come in and I'm a salesperson in Mercedes and you come in, you buy, you know, S class for, you know, or AMG for a hundred and something thousand dollars you are giving me your hard-earned money and you're taking that vehicle and you're driving every day, okay? You can go into the a garage and stare at it. You can clean it, get some enjoyment out of it. You could drive it. You could take trips with it. You know, people can look at it and be like, oh man, that's a nice ride, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where, and then you can take that and after a year or two, if you want to get something else, there's value in exchanging that for something else. With me, you know, you get a guy that comes in, loses $100,000 and you know, other than the hotel room, the dinners, the experience, the shows, the nights games, or, you know, take them out golfing or, or do stuff like that. That's the experience that they get to go home with mm-hmm. minus the hundred thousand dollars. So you got to be experienced in building that relationship to where, Hey man, I don't want to get beat up every time. It's not my money. You know, I don't get paid on your losses. I get, you know, I get paid, you know, a salary and, you know, I, I, I'm all for you winning and everyone else losing, you know? And so you have to build that whole experience of how do I talk to this person? How do I, you know, deal with them in a way where it's a tough pill to swallow when you lose that much money, you know? But on the flip side is the people I've gotten to meet throughout the years of hosting, you know, I would never have met these people in Mm -hmm. Rhode Island. You know, from all the way from overseas to Chinese Taipei to, you know, Australia to England to, you know, all, you know, all the states, you know, I mean, I've met some really cool people and I built relationships that, you know, will attest, you know, time. If I'm in certain areas in this country and I'm stuck and stranded, chances are I have someone within an hour away that I could call and be like, you know, Mike, you can come stay on my, you, I, you can yeah. have the, you can have the master bedroom. I'll sleep on the couch. Yeah. That's, that is, that's very interesting. I guess I wasn't aware because, you know, in, even in South Carolina, there's not really, there's no gambling allowed. They, they still haven't, mm-hmm. you know, but so you kind of get it from like a water drip of other places and locations and then, you know, from gra- you know, grape finds and media, et cetera. But I, I guess I wasn't aware of how extensive that, you know, that position and like the things and the things they correlate at casinos was. But that's that's pretty impressive because I guess, you, you again, you like you said, you want to continue to bring these type of clientele to the to there as well as you know, expand it further. But that is that's, that's pretty neat. It's unfortunate because, you know, think about it. OK, as a person. All right. You have two restaurants. OK, you have a Michelin star restaurant that's expensive mm-hmm. um, and then or not even Michelin star, but you have a restaurant that's expensive and the food is excellent. OK, but the service is shit. OK, yeah. and then you have a rest, then you have another restaurant that the food is OK, but you know that waiter or you know that bartender. And it's like every time you go in there, you have a feeling of, oh, I want to come back. You know, but you go to that other restaurant that's, oh, the food's good, but man, like, you know, my experience was terrible. You know, there's millions of restaurants. You're going to end up going more to the one that's mediocre compared to the one that's excellent because it's how you, it's how you feel. I mean, people are very uh, emotional regardless, you know, they're very emotional. So, you know, the, the tough part of hosting now is that it's kind of watered down and a lot of corporations come in and they want to make it as far as a numbers game. Um, and you know, one of my main reasons for leaving Caesars 
um, was not only we had to we moved back to Rhode Island, but like I started seeing that hey they brought this company in to teach us how to sell. Um, and it's like dude, you don't know how. Like I said, we're not selling Mercedes or vacuum cleaners. Like we're selling experiences and relationships. So when you sit here and you tell me I need to limit my you know phone calls to ten minutes and my personal interactions to to five minutes, it's just not feasible to build that relationship. Mm -hmm. If I have a guest of mine who just lost her husband and I'm on the phone with them and we're at nine minutes and forty five seconds, you know, it, I can't sit there and be like, hey, so and so, um, you got fifteen seconds. Can you cut this short while she's sitting there crying, right. wondering where she's gonna, you know, what she's gonna do next. Like, that's just not hosting anymore. The great thing about Circa is with my owner, he's amazing, and the, the staff around me is like, hey, bring these people in, build a relation, show them a good time, and make solid business decisions. That's what we want. You know, there's not like, you know, Caesars was very dollar oriented. You know, we'd go in and in our big office, we'd have this this chalkboard or this whiteboard and it would have everyone's name on it and it would have percentages to what our numbers are. So like, for instance, uh, with paying analysis, they would send benchmarks per quarter and for the year. So there was a certain number I would have to get to. So when you walk in, you see, hey, you know, Malucci's at, you know, 50% business that he brought in already he needs to get to 50 more percent to make his benchmark and he's got 30 percent on the books so if all 30 people come in that means i need to make up 25 20 percent of it in order to get to my number and like you'd walk in there and my number may be um you know three times the number of this other host and they're already at like 110 percent and i'm mm -hmm. at like 50 percent and it's like man i need i need to get to this number and it's very stressful um you know and in those places you're really only as good as your last day yeah. whereas where i'm at now it's it's a different environment which i actually enjoy going to work which before it was kind of like yeah it's a beautiful place i mean caesar's is beautiful but you know i don't i don't want to be here yeah it becomes more of a yeah like you said it adds a level of stress and then kind of, that kind of takes away from the authenticity of of having like building relationships with your clients and the people that you come and visit and you want to like maintain that too. Cause if it's a, right. Are you feeling pressured? You know, it kind of changes the, dyna the dy dynamic of, of how you interact with people. Yeah. That'd be, hundred percent. That'd be, that's, that's crazy. So how many, so, and I'm just asking this in general, just cause I'm, I'm not really familiar with it, but like how many, how many other people are there that are doing the same role as you like give or take, obviously it's different, but between casinos, but like on average, yeah, it's been really difficult with us here in Vegas because you have some new properties that had opened, um, you know, with Resort Worlds and, you know, you got Fountain Blue opening mm -hmm. and, you know, you have other people that, you know, may not be happy with their um, salary and jump ship. So um, right now, I think we're at like 20. So I think we're at like 20 something people that do mm -hmm. hosting between Circa, Golden Gate and the D. Um, you know, we had a lot more, but people like the, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side, you mm -hmm. know, and, you know, I'm all about loyalty and longevity and, you know, I may not have started off where I wanted to be when I first came to the company, but I'm definitely where I, you know, I'm definitely trending every year at the right direction. And, you know, you show a company loyalty, they're going to show you loyalty. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what I found with the company I'm at now. Yeah. And that's, and that's really cool. That's a really interesting dynamic too and it's etc especially being in las vegas and stuff and i was going to say because like i mean I'm, I'm sure there's i'm sure in some aspects it can be very much cutthroat and you know new businesses and new investments come in and they tried their best to try and pull successful guys away from other places especially if you start to garner a reputation so so how long have you been doing this as it as it stands now and you may have mentioned earlier so you started, since i was 18 18 pretty yeah. much i've been in a casino business wow that's crazy that is crazy mm -hmm. so um Man, I'm like, that's just kind of one of those things that just kind of kind of falls in, and then everything kind of places and pieces start to come together. So, did uh, with with you with you making that trek, did did your family end up deciding or making that move? Because I know you had mentioned that you said your dad or your your father would really enjoy kind of Vegas's atmosphere and stuff like that. But uh, did they ever move, or did they stay in Rhode Island? They stayed in Rhode Island. Yes, okay. yes. Parents, family, they all stayed in Rhode Island. I was pretty much the only one that left. Oh, that's tough too. Especially as you leave, you know, all friendships, but, uh, but, you know, obviously for, for, for new, new experience, new life, I think you can always reset and, 
you could have always reset, I guess, and, and then gone back, worst case. Yeah, scenario. it's difficult. I mean, you can never replace those friends that, right. like, you know, uh, yeah, I have friends in Rhode Island that, you know, the whole, the whole, um, scene with Ben Affleck in the town where yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, like that, those friends I have, you know, and gotcha. you can never replace them. And, but, you know, sometimes out of sight, out of mind, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's difficult, you know? And, um, so coming out, listen, to be honest with you, my wife is pretty much all I need. Yeah. I'm lucky. She's my best friend and, you know, we could do everything together. And, you know, after a long, thick, aggravating day of work i can come home and i've just had 50 60 100 conversations with people i can sit there and talk to her all night so as much as i love the relationships i've built you know that's really the only relationship that means Mm -hmm. the world to me you know friends are going to come and go but you know lifelong friends that i have in rhode island i mean i do miss a lot of them and you know i wish they were in my life you know more than they are and but again you know, I'm 41 years old, and if I'm ever going to build something for my family and myself, then you need to set your priorities to a position where yeah. what's what's more important? Could this interaction or or eight eight extra hours at work um, translate into something bigger for my family in the future? Or you know, is that you know weekend trip back to Rhode Island um, kind of reset? You know, is that so? It's like kind of you got to get your yeah. priorities straight. You know. Yeah, and I think sometimes people get kind of caught up in that that dynamic of not knowing which to take or, I don't know, I guess falling into a sense of like comfort, you know, I guess, if that mm-hmm, makes sense. Mm-hmm. So what's right. what's been the most ex- exciting part? Like, Is there like a, a one specific moment where you were kind of like, yeah, this is definitely the, the position for me or like this is definitely where I want to continue going? Even if it was when you start, you first made that move, was there ever a moment you were just like, yeah, this is, this is it for sure? Yeah, I mean... <sighs> It, just being around everything, mm-hmm. okay? Being around the fact that, you know, now I'm talking to a CEO of a company that's worth billions, and I'm the I'm the first phone call he makes when he wants to think about Vegas. Or, yeah. you know, like that right there is just really humbling to the fact that, you know, I'm a, just, just a person from a small state, a small town, and this person thinks enough of me um, to be like, hey, Maluccio, my guy, you know, like, like, I just love those personal interactions, yeah. you know, and, you know, there's times where, you know, I, I'll tell you what, there was a, it actually really, re, it happened probably about four, four years ago. Um, I was working at the D and I met this awesome guy and older gentleman, and uh, he'd come in once a year and, um So he was coming up on a trip, like his trip was like, say, I got the phone call on Thursday and his trip was on Monday. Um, He calls me up and he's like, hey, Mike, I just want to let you know I'm not going to make it on Monday. Um, I said, oh, no problem. I said, you know, thanks for giving me a call. I said, is everything okay? And he's like, he's like, no, man, I'm, I'm in hospice right now. And I'm like, dude, like anyone knows that when you go into hospice, like that's where they put you when you're ready to go. You know, yeah. this guy thought enough of me to call me to cancel his reservation. Okay. And it's like, man, like I have that much of an impact on people's lives and mm. it's important to me. And it, like his, my birthday was that, that Tuesday, the day after he was arriving and I come into work a few days later and the guy sent me a birthday card. Oh, wow. And it's like, I don't know, man, like if I'm dying, I'm in hospice. You know, I think I don't know if my priorities are going to be like that. Mm -hmm. But that guy, so the relationships are what like really led me to be like, this is what I want to do. Yeah, I'm going to say you're making a personal impact on on multiple people, especially, and that's 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 pretty tough. I think in general, because one thing that I, you know, I struggle with is I enjoy having multiple relationships and interactions with people, and I enjoy those type of friendships and. And being able to, I guess, you know, kind of like in your aspect of being able to person that they call if they have a question or whatever, if I can answer, you know, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's tough to juggle that many people and be able to keep touch and then making sure, you know, and maintaining those relationships, but it does, it pays off quite a bit when you you, just the level of respect that you get back, you know, especially when people are comprehending or know, you know, taking, taking that little extra effort to, 
to give back in time. Kind of like the like the response with the text message. Like just instead of saying yep, you kind of give a a full right it's thing. Yeah. Bittersweet at work because you know I I tend to be the one that you know when we have a new hire they're like hey Malouche you gotta you know take this person under your wing or they gotta spend five days with you and. You know, it's like, dude, I got someone shadowing me. Like, that's the last thing I want. Like, mm -hmm. I am on my own time. I'm doing my own thing because, you know, I'm technically an independent rep. Like, I got nobody over my shoulder. So when I go into work, I can decide, you know, whether to go sit at Circus Sports and watch, you know, the games that are on TV for, for eight hours. Or, you know, or I can set goals for myself. Hey, when I first get in, I'm going to make five phone calls. I'm going to respond to all my emails. Um, you know, and then then go meet people on the floor or go have lunch or go do this. But, you know, I try and tell people, everyone that I, I um, um, you know, that's shadowing me, there's three things that you have to live by. One, when you say you're going to do something, do it. That's one of my biggest things. OK, if you're not going to do it, just don't don't tell anybody or don't don't say I'm going to do it and then just not follow up. It's mm -hmm. the biggest disrespect I feel, you know, if you made it, just say no. If you made it a point to say, I'm going to do it, do it. OK, um, never promise somebody, you know, something that you can't, you know, um, you know, follow through on. So, hey, man, like, yeah, I, I'm going to request a suite for you this weekend, but I don't necessarily know if we'll get it. It's Super Bowl. So, you know, it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. Don't promise them a suite. And then next thing you know, they don't get the suite and, you know, or the dinner and, and, you know, they're like mad at you. And then the last thing is be readily available. Like if you're in the middle of something, I have two days off. Sunday, Mondays are my days off. OK, and luckily enough, I built up a good book of business and people know me that those are my days off. They try not to bother me. Mm -hmm. But if someone, you know, someone reaches out to me and says, hey, Mike, you know, um, I'm looking to book a reservation, shoot them a text back. Hey, I'm off today and tomorrow. I'll be back on Tuesday. Can I reach out to you then? Just be responsive to people. Yeah. Yeah, and that, and that and goes a long huge. way. Yeah, that I'm gonna say that goes a long way. That just means that there's a, a level of availability and the respect to to respond back, even if it's not a day off. You know, you and and I was gonna say too, like what your days off were. So that that answers that. But uh, in a, in a lot of ways, you really don't get a day off. You just have a. I don't know. ever get a day off. Yeah. You know, this this times I counted. I think during Super Bowl, um, I counted. I had. 75, 76 conversations going on at once on through text message. Oh my gosh. Holy shit. Like, dude, that's a lot of text messages. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, like even, even right now, I just get a text message from one of my guests. He's like, Hey, I'm at a gun auction. Um, give me a call. And I'm like, sorry, dude, I'm at a, at a podcast, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm doing a podcast and you know, um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm never I'm never off. And, yeah. and that's kind of sucks because, you know, I tell people and this is the whole transition into, you know, your Second Amendment community and, you know, the gun hobby and all that other stuff is, mm -hmm. you know, I spend all day making other people happy that sometimes I forget what makes me happy. Yeah. So on, on that front, too, so we can we can move, we'll move over there because um, that's a whole different story as well. So that's kind of opened up different corridors and then you started started a new business, uh, Zero Legion. And, yes. you know, so let's, we'll talk about that for a second. So Zero Legion. So, uh, and so a quick funny story, which in, entails this, um, we have a mutual friend, a uh, good friend over at, uh, uh, Gray Birch that we had on the podcast re recently, mm -hmm. Wyatt. And he had mentioned to me, he's like, Hey, um, there's someone that you may, um, maybe interested in having a podcast for me to inter you know, introduce you. I think you, I think you guys would really en enjoy it. So I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, absolutely. So we started text message and, and et cetera. And we we're kind of going back and very much more of a formal type in, you know, interactions. And uh, at the same time, I was, I think I was going about doing something. I jumped on Instagram and I was having a small conversation with a, uh, with a small business called uh, zero legion. Didn't, wasn't familiar with them. Saw, you know, had to just peruse real quick. Oh, seems, seems pretty cool. So gave him a follow. We're just kind of chattering and then uh, switched back to this conversation and uh, Mike and I are sitting here, you know, kind of having more of a formal kind of starting getting things lined up and everything. And then lo and behold, little did I know that it was actually Mike's business. You know, it was pretty funny. We were sitting here <laughs> thinking he's, he was, he was like, you know, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but uh, this is Mike, by the way. And I don't know why I just, <laughs> I just went straight over my head, you know, and like, cause it's funny. Cause I have a bunch of, you know, a bunch of friends that are out that way and stuff. And so, you know, I just mm -hmm. don't even think much of it. I just think, Oh, cool. Like, you know, it's another, another cool dude. And we know, et cetera, et cetera. 
you know, just, you know, just exchanging stuff. And it was just, it was just kind of a funny type of interaction. And then of course I was like, well, thank God I wasn't an asshole or wasn't a dick or something like that. You know, <laughs> like that thing, like, uh, what do you want, dude? What the, you know, uh, thanks for, thanks for liking the episode. All right. Piss off, you know, but, uh, yeah, dude, I thought that was pretty funny. I'm like, I don't think he realizes that one, we're having a text conversation <laughs> yeah. and two, we're having a DM conversation. <laughs> and, it, but it, it's so, it's so tough though in this business, like, um, you know, like even Stott and Zero Legion, and we'll get into like how that came yeah, about, yeah. um, is that like, you know, guys will hit me up and it's like, you know, it, it's the company name and it's like, I, I don't know who you are. Yeah. Like, like I may know who you are, but I may not know, I may not put two and two together. So it's like, you know, at least let me know, Hey man, this is John, you know, you know, we met at shot show last year mm -hmm. and, and this is my company, you know, just want to say hi, not, you know, dude, you know, um, what's up? How's things going? Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I don't expect people. And even like when I started zero, it's like, you know, I reach out to Derek at privateer. Hey, by the way, this is Malucci. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey dude. Good. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I don't want to feel like an, I don't want him to feel like an idiot. Like who's this dude or like, <laughs> you know, and then next, thing you know, like he's been talking to me for six months and then we finally see each other and then, you know, Hey, well, how do you like my drop? Well, what drop? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. so like, I don't ever want to put people in a position to where they, they feel uncomfortable either, you yeah. know? Yeah. I'm going to say, and that's, uh, I think that's just a, a lot of the realm too, of like social media and then like that whole area and brand, you know, industry. It's, it's tough too. Cause there's like a bunch of stuff and there's a bunch of guys that pop on they go in and go out, phase in, phase out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's, it's always cool. You know, it's, it's cool getting to know some of the people behind, behind the brands as well. You know, and especially with someone like you, who's who who is very proficient and with relationships and you know communication stuff like that. So, it's it's right. it's it's a big aspect of it. But yeah, pretty cool. So, you know, on on that front. So like, what's you know what what is it that you are offering to people? Like, what is your legion? Let's we'll talk about that. So, um, it basically, so let, let's let's rewind just a little bit because a sure. cool story on how I actually even got into this. Yeah. So um, if it wasn't for the casino business, I probably would never be where I am right now. Okay. Um, so it's kind of important. So one day I'm working at um, the D and my office is kind of like an L shape and there's a door right behind me and it was um, uh, the um, hotel manager. And, um, on Tuesday nights, like with me and my wife still bowl and, you know, my wife's in two hall of fame. So it was kind of pretty important, you know, that we bowl. And on Tuesdays was our league night. So I generally would leave on Tuesdays around like four thirty um, to get home, get the dog situated, get the equipment and then get down to the bowling alley. So we're not rushing. And so I'm sitting there and the hotel manager was on the phone with the guest and he's like, Oh, so, you know, you don't have a casino host, you know, let me transfer you over to one so you can discuss it with him. So I kind of turned around and I kind of went like, you know, the whole slit the throat thing, like don't send it over to me. And with a smile, he clicks on the transfer button and the, my phone's ringing. So <laughs> I, I, I was like this asshole. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I pick up the phone and, you know, the gentleman was like, um, um, hey, man, like I'm coming out for a convention and here are my dates. And it was like January 17th through the 22nd. So immediately I heard convention. And I heard the dates, and I'm like, okay, well, it doesn't sound like he's coming out for the porn convention, so he has to be coming out for SHOT Show. And so um, I said to him, I said, oh, well, you know, what convention are you coming out for? He's like, oh, I'm coming to SHOT Show. I'm like, oh, shit, you know, and I had, you know, I've been shooting since I was young, and I've had ARs, mm -hmm. I've had, you know, handguns and, you know, bolt action, I've had everything. And so... Um, uh, he goes, I'm coming out for SHOT Show. I said, oh, that's cool. I said, you know, are you, I, I said, I, I go to SHOT Show every year. And, you know, um, he's like, oh, you do? I was like, yeah. And uh, I was like, what do you do? He's like, I manufacture, you know, AR-15s and stuff like that. I said, oh, you know, what's your company? And uh, I don't think he minds me mentioning it, but because sure. um, he's a close friend. Um, he's like, I own AndroCorp Industries um, out in Winter Garden, Florida. I was like, oh, cool. So I immediately get on, you know, his website and I'm mm -hmm. looking and, and he's like, oh, so um, he's like, so I said, like, oh, you get some cool products and shit like that, you know. And he's like, well, what do you, what do you shoot? Um, I said, you know, I said, well, right now I just got, um, you know, a few, a few Glock 19s, and you know, as far as AR, I have a 12.5 SBR uh, Noveski Gen 3. He's like, what? He's like, you shoot Noveski? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I've been following Noveski for a while, and you know, that was one of my first builds, you mm -hmm. know, I did, and so. 
you know, then obviously Jason hears Noveski and was like, oh man, this guy's a great client. You know, I could get him, you know, you know, looking at my stuff. So the, right then and there, me and Jason just became friends. You know, he <laughs> const we, we constantly text and he, you know, to consider him a brother of mine, you know, and loving to death. So that opened up the door to, I went to SHOT Show uh, with them that year, and I ended up meeting a bunch of other people. And, you know, following Noveski from, you know, I think my first order, I was sending it to the president um, and a few of the guys over there. Uh, I sent them the a receipt of my first order, and it was like 2014. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I the minute I saw this one video that was on YouTube, I was like, this is the company, like, I wanted to fucking be a part of, um, or at least support. And mm -hmm. it was... Um, them on shooting through silence co and their rifles and then next thing you know they're on a boat and they're circling a a big uh swan and you know my buddy mike shoots the swan and and blows it up and i was like dude that's the fucking company you know <laughs> yeah. so you know that led me into okay all right what companies do i need to look at i need to look at cac i need to look at lmt i need to look at all these other brands and then i started getting into seeing like bags and and all this other stuff and i'm like you know what's this and they're like oh it's drop culture and i'm like well, what the fuck is drop culture and i'm like you know then someone explains it to me and i'm like so you're telling me that you have guys out there that you know will produce a product and you know it could be like you know and I, I I laugh about this because he's a buddy of mine. Um, he'll he'll drop it at 12:01 on January 1st, you know. And people, instead of kissing their wives or their girlfriends, they're gonna make sure they get that bag. <laughs> and I, and I'm like. Like, people do this? And like, yeah, people do this. I'm like, well, this is crazy. And then, well, sure enough, I'm sitting there in drop culture, and I'm sitting there, and my wife's like, hey, trying to talk to me. I'm like, hold on a second, hold on a second. I got to put my, you know, <laughs> my credit card information in. And she's like, for what? I'm like, a, a, a patch or a sticker. And she's like, can't you just buy it any time? like, no, 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 I got only got two seconds. I only got two seconds. <laughs> oh, man, I missed the drop. And <laughs> I'm like, this is wild, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, um, so I started following, um, you know, Corey at Subdef, and um, so I was really into the Ripper logo, and I think I told you this before, like, my brother was a huge skater, and, you know, he was buried with his, in his Little League uniform, mm -hmm. wearing Chuck Taylors and his Tony Hawk skateboard. I mean, that's literally what he was buried in. So, like, Bones Brigade and all that stuff, like, I, Ripper was, like, a huge thing. I, I loved that logo. And so, but I also loved... Um, you know, his Wahoo logo. And so one day I was sitting there and I came to my wife and I was like, Hey, how do I self address the envelope? And she's like, dude, are you serious? Like, how old are you? You don't know how to do this. And I'm like, well, just, just, you know, humor me. Yeah. So we <laughs> self address an envelope and I go in my pocket, I pull out $15 and I put it in an envelope and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, Oh, I'm sending $15 with a self addressed envelope to this company and they're going to send me a patch. And she's like, yeah, and I got an uncle in South Africa that wants to give me ten million, but I just got to send them a hundred thousand. You know, which one should we do? And I'm like, I'm not getting scammed, baby. First of all, it's fifteen dollars, you know. And so um, I put the I put the money in the envelope, and sure enough, a couple weeks later, but I I had a you know caught up my sleeve. I threw fifty dollars in match play in the envelope, and I threw my business card and I sent that along with it. So. You know, sure enough, a few days later, uh, a few weeks later, I get the Wahoo patch in. I was like, see, I didn't get scammed. <laughs> and, you know, so she's like, all right, yeah, you're an idiot, you know. And so, um, sure enough, uh, you know, a few months later, I get a uh, text message. Uh, I don't know if it was DM or text message, and it was Corey. He's like, dude, I got one question for you. Do you have a good steakhouse? And I laugh because when I listened to your podcast with him, mm -hmm. he had mentioned that he was looking for a good steakhouse. And this was right around the time that you That's guys cool. did the podcast, you know? And I'm like, Oh shit. Like that was the time. And so I said, matter of fact, I have two. when you're ready, let me know and I'll get you set up. Mm -hmm. And so straight up Corey fashion. Okay. He picks the busiest day in Las Vegas, <laughs> the busiest night. And it's like six, four, 50 and he texts me and says hey can you get us in um to the steakhouse and i'm like sure what time and when he's like tonight in 10 minutes and i'm like oh my god dude 
<laughs> so I go down to the homies at Barry's and I'm like, hey, dude, um, I got my boy coming in. You know, can you get it set up? Sure. No problem. So I text him back and I'm like, hey, man, you're all set. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, make sure you're here in 10 minutes. And he comes down and it's been history ever since. You know, yeah. me and Corey have been, you know, very close. And, you know, I got a lot to thank, you know, to Corey for because, I mean, you know, I, I know sometimes people, you know, he, he just likes to ruffle feathers and mm -hmm. I love it. It's him. And dude, he's just such a good dude, you know, and if it wasn't for him, you know, a lot of these other guys like Privateer and, and, you know, Fear Tomorrow and Cutthroat and Dirty Kid and, you know, all those guys. And, you know, even you, I, I, if I never got into that, I probably would never have made the solid relationships I made with all these dudes. And it, it's huge because, you know, I got a lot of guys reaching out to me now and not only personally but business wise like hey dude like you know we see how cool circa is you know you know we want to come support so you know let, let's book something you know so um that kind of led me on the path and that was probably two three years ago and so then you know over the course of time you know we go out shooting and we go talk we'd have dinner and i'm like you know what like fuck like you know maybe i should you know maybe i should um like, I like wearing other people's shit, and I like to pe make people happy. Like, I feel like I have an idea that people will kind of enjoy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our good friend Granger was obviously working, you know, at House Party, and, um, you know, so... Um, you know, I was talking to Granger and obviously Granger's like, you should do a cannoli. And I'm like, dude, come on. Like, I'm not doing cannolis <laughs> and shit, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, so I sat down with TJ um, at House Party and TJ has been a huge influence and a huge help with me. And, you know, I'm thankful. And I said, dude, I said, one, if you look at, you know, the Italian culture, okay, regardless of what nationality, yeah, obviously people are going to hate Italians and people are going to hate every race, you know, but the Italian culture is prominent regardless of what race you are, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, people love the mafia type stuff, they, they, you know, and even all the way back to the Roman days, like, we're in the Second Amendment community and, and people shoot and, you know, but back in the day, if the Romans had AR-15s, it would probably be a CAC or a Noveski or, or something like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I'm like, why not go from roman day and you can see the influence you can see other people's drops and stuff it's all predicated on the start of you know war and and defending yourself and defending your country and all that other stuff like let's go from all the way from roman days all the way up to like the mafia type italian culture you know food you know um you know all that because I get DMs all the time of a funny Sopranos thing or, or, Hey, you know, uh, uh, you know, like the Italian themed, you know, um, uh, Instagram pages. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what if I just blend a mixture between Italian culture and the guns? Because I don't see that happening in the space we are today. And it's like, I just don't want to be another brand that's okay. Yeah. It's another brand. It's another patch. I got to buy. It's another mm -hmm. sticker. I got to buy or another t-shirt, but I want to put shit out there that like, like I want to walk, like I see it all the time at Circa. And I, it, and I'll tell you a funny story, how I met, you know, cutthroat and, um, you know, a Gans and all those guys and yeah, yeah. stuck on semi-auto. Um, but like, I want to, like, I walk around Circa and I see other, you know, homies shirts and I'm like, this is tight. Like, I don't know who this person is. And like, I want to be that person to where, Hey, I put out a product and they're like, dude, I'm stoked to rep it. Like, I, that's a cool logo. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that. And so, you know, luckily enough, I finished my second pre-order yesterday and the, you know, people have been like, it's very humbling to be like, Hey man, like, you know, I don't have a ton of money, but he has, you know, $32 per t-shirt. Like that's, means a lot to me and it's cool, you know? And, um, like, uh, with Cutthroat and, um, those guys, I, I literally was walking through the D and this was COVID time. And, um, they, I see this guy walk in with a private t-shirt and, you know, a Cutthroat shirt and stuff like that. And like, they looked like they were lost and they were literally the only guys not wearing masks in the building and shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm like, Hey dude, like I help you guys. And like, Oh, you know, we're looking for this, this and that. And I'm like, okay, well, this is where you go. And this is where you go. And I'm like, Oh, you know, by the way, I like your private t-shirt. And they were like, do you know about <laughs> privateer? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, dude, like, you know, so then I start, and then, you know, ever since that day, it was like, like, you're part of the family, 
You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And in Italian culture, family is important, you know? So, like, I thought that was really cool. So if I can ever walk around one day, not only in Vegas, but, like, South Carolina, and I see someone, you know, wearing my shirt, it's going to mean a lot to me. It's going to be pretty fucking cool, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of where we went from to now. I mean, it's a shorter story, but, yeah, it was. it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's fun being able to, like you said, it's, it's humbling when people, you know, everyone, we all know that not everyone can afford, and there's a tight restricted budgets and like that's that's something too i think people uh in the grand scheme sometimes don't understand that like you know a lot of people I, i'm sure wish they could buy everything so when they're able to when they do go out of their way to spend a little bit of mo- their hard work hard earned money on your stuff it's yeah it's it's it means a lot i would say it's to me that's about to say it's uh it's very moving and stuff like that so yeah it's really right cool. and i want I, I want to support everybody but you know now you know the 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 tough part is yeah i have a lot of homies out there dropping a lot of shit you know yeah, yeah. and but i got a you know i got a family you know, i got a wife and right. dogs and cats i gotta feed too you know so i try and get in you know and you know a, a huge huge guy you know that's been really good to me is gorilla tactical i mean he he's been amazing like i just really have and i might miss some people but dude it's just the community like and i know you know on some of your podcasts you talk about the community the homies that i've met you know doing what we've been doing is just been amazing you know Mm -hmm. it's it's tight yeah i was gonna say like even the the worst or the bad experiences you have with a couple a handful if if not that it's totally made up made up for by the the very awesome people that you do get to meet or you know people who you would never have known which i think like that's in terms of like social media and stuff like that that's that was kind of like a different you know difficult aspect i think for a lot of people like you know, but on, on the flip side, you know, the amount of stuff that you gain from like Instagram and all the other via, I, I say Instagram specifically, cause that's like been the big, uh, you know, method of movement for, for a lot of guys. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's awesome, man. I'm about to say so. And dude, any, anybody that thinks this is easy, it's not, Yeah, no, you know, no. it's not easy. I mean, I, I'm 41 years old turning 42 next month. And it's like, you know, it, it, you got to watch what content you put out. Okay. Yeah. All right. How do I do that? Okay. You can't take a, you know, you know, iPhone photos are okay, but okay. You really need to get a, a camera <laughs> and uh, dude, and I'm sorry. I'm, I don't have a Leica yet. And I know a lot of your guests are <laughs> frowning on the, the Sony crew, but no, you know, no, no. I, I, you know, I, I buy an a seven and you know, I get a 35 millimeter, you know, a G master and, and my wife's like, you want to spend what on what? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. And it, but babe, it's a business write off, you know, and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm so lucky. Like, my wife is so supportive on everything I do, which is uh, amazing, you know? And, um, so yeah, like figuring out content to put out and, and trust me, like I have a full-time job. Yeah. Like I have a full-time job and I don't have time for everything, but you know, I've tried to put as much time as I can to put out a product where people can look at my page and be like, Oh yeah, that's, this, that's a tight photo. Uh, yeah. You know, I like that, you know, and, and it's appealing to people, but it's not easy. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like when I want to come home and, you know, sit on the couch and relax and, and it's like, you know, reach out to the homies and be like, dude, you need some content, you know, let's go to eat at Carbone or let's go eat at, you know, this Italian restaurant, you know, because I mean, and then you got to take three, four hours out of your day and then, you know, go do shit like that. And then, you know, so it's it's definitely not not an easy thing to do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm about to say so on on that front too. Like, what would you what would you say has been one of the more one of the more difficult aspects of learning or trying to pick up? You know, it's kind of like the music thing. Like, I can't tell you a lyric, or I could mm-hmm. probably sing a few lyrics, but and I can hear, but I can hear a a beat really well. Like, mm-hmm. I can hear a beat really well. Well, the flip side in cameras, it's like you know. I I was texting um you know a buddy of mine um you know Austin and I mean you know Austin and mm-hmm. um Lingo and the main thing like I told him was like getting into photography the thing that I like the most is that I look at the world just a little bit differently mm-hmm. like I I can appreciate things I'm not always looking straight or I'm not always looking down I'm looking at you know the aspect of where I'm at and you know the toughest part is to see something that you like and it's like okay like I see this it a you know a 180 degree view of it right to be able to get that into a four by five picture is like okay like how do I capture this to make other people feel what I'm feeling right now Mm -hmm. so I mean I think that's kind of like the toughest part and you know 
you've been amazing. I mean, shit, as far as Lightroom's concerned, learning Lightroom, learning, uh, you know, Photoshop, like, like simple aspects of, hey, dude, the, the preset isn't the beginning and the end all. Like, you can throw a preset on that, but you are going to have to tweak it to where you feel the way you see it, yeah. you want to portray it. So, you know, things that I see other people may not like and, you know, going on, you know, there's a lot of really talented people out there on, you know, Instagram that own brands and, you know, looking at their, you know, in the photographers, like I'm amazed at how they do it. And, you know, you can't just, I mean, I guess you can walk out your house and capture a picture, but, you know, if I want to go take pictures, it's, I got to, Oh, especially for content, I literally have to leave my house. I have to go down to the strip. I have to go to dinner. I have to walk around the strip. I ha have to take time away from my family. I have to do all that stuff. So the, the tough part is the dedication to it as well, mm -hmm. you know, and carrying a camera around. I'm in a suit and tie all day. If I walk around Circa with an A7 and a, and a, you know, even if I had a 100 to 400 millimeter lens, I mean, people are going to look at me like I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say because it's it's just a whole different and in some aspects you're kind of leaving the house with a like a with a mindset like you're you're out there right. with a the mission so it's 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 tough man it is it's it's tough and uh, it's there's there's a learning curve to every parts of it and every aspect of it and, you know that's I, I would say that's been definitely been a uh, a love hate relationship in terms of love the fact that it's a new like outlet that I've been able to find but it, additionally it seems like just when i feel like i've figured it out it gets a little bit tougher than originally when i start thinking like well i wish i could uh well you start doing this a different way or kind of you know just there's always there's always a new learning curve to it, which is kind of fun you know it's it's fun in its own way too right and i, I got my buddies out in florida that run deadlock coding mm -hmm. um you know they're really into you know they take some solid and i, I know my I, I, luckily my buddy anytime i text him he's like you know, responds right away. And it's like, I send him a picture and he's like, yeah, you might have to work on that, dude. And then it's like, <laughs> I send him another picture. All right, good, good, good. You know? So I'm super appreciative with the guys that I've met that like I can bounce ideas off of. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I'm, I'm always about like my father always said, shut your mouth and listen. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I like to get a couple aspects of, you know, what this person thinks and what this person thinks and what that person thinks. And then I m merge them together to kind of maybe get something that I enjoy, you know, yeah. or, I feel is correct, you know, so it's been huge, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking for, I have so many cool opportunities that are coming up with this whole industry uh, or this whole, you know, brand thing, which I'm super excited for. I'm pumped. Yeah. So, um, and I'm about to say, so in zero legion and stuff like that and the visual and you've obviously, like you said, the Italian, the Italian flair, which I, I agree. I think um, that's like a mesmerization that I don't think it's just, it's just like U.S. culture too. I think it's a definitely a, a worldwide thing. There's definitely like a an attribute, whether it's based on from from cinema or or movies or war and stuff like that. There's always been a, a nice little tinge, you know. That's it's always going to be present in some way or some form. Um, so I don't, yeah, I but agree. I was to say it was funny because um, there's like a, there was like a trending like quote unquote meme that was going around and it was like. How often the, the how often a you male, think of Rome yeah, yeah so how often men think or men or women think of Rome and like you know it's like that flashback thing of like you know yeah so funny that you say that. yeah so you so you already know I mean, you got you got yeah you get your hand on the pulse so you get your finger on the pulse of it so right 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 yeah I just don't want uh, it. it you go, and the thing is is like you know I I talked about hey do I show my face do I not show my face mm -hmm. and it's like you know, I know guys don't and it's fine. I mean, that's, that's their choice and that's their brand, which is cool, you know? And, um, but it's like, you know, we had this conversation. It's like, yeah, dude, show your face. I mean, it's one thing if I did a Facebook live or an Instagram live and, you know, my whole thing, you know, I mean, my first t-shirt was, you know, a mob boss dead in front of his Lincoln, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and which is really, you know, kind of, you know, edgy and shit, you know, but, you know, there will be the funny cannolis later, later on and all that other shit. But, you know, if I were to do an Instagram live after dropping that shirt and then, you know, I'm sitting here with red hair, green eyes and speaking with an Irish accent, it's like, dude, this kid ain't believable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This, this is like, this is my life. This is my culture. You know, I may not have, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things I can't say, but you know, <laughs> I, I, um, that's my life, you know? And, and, you know, if I can put my flair on it, then I will, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good to see like that type, that being kind of like done in that way too, because I think that's something that kind mm -hmm. of gets, you know, overlooked or overseen or, 
or, you know, just over overdone, you know, and in, in many ways. So it's cool to kind of see that different take. And uh, I'm about to say, I enjoy, I bet I enjoyed it. I'm about to say that's the, thanks. Dude, appreciate it's, a, it. it's a good, it's a good way of going about it without it being kind of like something that's been done already. So I'm about to say, I like the shirt. I remember you asking me or mentioning to me like, Oh, what'd you think of the shirt? I was like, actually, actually, I kind of like it. You know, I kind of, I kind of dig it. It kind of reminds me of like the old school type of, uh, like band tees or like, you know, whatever tees that are printed and they have like a, mm-hmm. a whatever scene or action scene printed on it. So to me, it's it was it was pretty sweet, and it was. Uh... Well, there's more there, there's more of that coming. Like yeah, I literally, yeah. the, the the biggest thing is like, n- like I have literally like six drops, and I have a few collabs that you know I've been talking to with people, and like I want to drop everything right now, but it's like, okay, let's let's slowly get this out and mm-hmm. gain traction, and you know it's been cool. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I'm relatively new. I mean, so yeah. I, I hope this thing grows to where I want it to. And I hope I put stuff out there with people like, dude, that's tight. Like, I want that shit. That's cool. Yeah. Well, and you also luckily, you know, you have friends and you have others who, who are very, very successful at it too. You know, like Corey is one of the best in the game. So having a friend he like that. kills it. Yeah. Having a friend like that can really just someone to lean on in terms of methodology and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's awesome. But, uh, what's been, uh, what's been your favorite aspect of it so far? I mean, obviously you get to meet and you get to put like a persona and some, some personal hobbies that you enjoy into your, your brand and your personality. But, uh, what's been one of your favorite parts of it so far? Yeah. Again, it comes back to those relationships. Like, you know, I have an opportunity next month to go, uh, visit the guys at Noveski. Like I'm literally bought something back in 2014 mm-hmm. and I follow this company and you know, um, you know, these guys have become friends of mine. Like, and it's like, Hey dude, like, you know, you want to come up? Well, I, I don't travel much. Like mm-hmm. we have animals that are sick and it's tough for me to travel. And you know, I don't, like I said, I don't necessarily do things for myself and, you know, with this, the brand coming up and, you know, I do need to travel and go see people and, you know, not always have them come to Vegas. And so, Hey dude, like, you know, come on out next month and book my plane ticket. And it's like, dude, we're so pumped to have you come out, you know, like, like this is going to be a good time. Like, where are you going to stay? I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I can get a whole a hotel. Fuck that. You're staying at Savage, you know? So it's like, <laughs> you know, now I have an opportunity to go up to Noveski, hang with the boys and, you know, you know, stay at the Noveski house. So it's like super, it's like, it's wicked cool to be able to mm-hmm. be like, this is where we've come to. And, you know, I've worked hard at my relationships because I care about people, you know? And let me tell you something. You know, don't let that caring fool you. If you cross me, I will never talk to you again. And but everybody I've dealt with has been really, really uh, welcoming. And um, so, I mean, to be able to have the opportunity to do stuff like that, you know, is is definitely something I'm pumped and looking forward to. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I would say it's always it's always cool to see that type of journey and stuff. And I think the best thing about it is when when you kind of get into this. And I think this is lacking from a lot of people is that is that level of like personality and also having relationship and, you know, being able to, you know, really communicate. Cause when you don't have that, sometimes it, it kind of like, you know, pulls away from the authenticity of whatever you are, or whatever you're doing, if you can't like, you know, find a way. So you already kind of having that background and personality, I think really kind of helps just build it bigger, you know? Mm-hmm. So very, mm-hmm. very cool. Very, very cool. So yeah, but I said, so what's, what is on the, what's on the menu for, for zero Legion? Like, what are you planning? What is, what is something that you want to do or that you have planned? Or if you don't want to talk about it just yet? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm really pumped with some of the, you know, collabs that, you know, kind of, kind of working themselves out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, me and Derek at Privateer, we, we're trying to come up with something, um, which I think would be tight. And then, you know, Fear Tomorrow, me and him are probably going to come out with something um, during SHOT Show um, or right after SHOT Show. Um, and I, I'm just excited to, you know, kind of travel. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, you know, Dirty Kid and Cutthroat and and those guys are the homies. So um, trying to f- this is like casino wise, it's tough because, you know, I'm football season started. So mm-hmm. October tends to be our busiest year. November is busy, but slow during um, um, Thanksgiving. But then December comes around and it's kind of busy in the beginning. But then Taylor's down during Christmas. But then the, the three are huge. It's, you know, New Year's, then Super Bowl and then March Madness. Yeah. So. You know, like I said, I'm going to Noveski next month to hang with them for a few days. And then, you know, hopefully to get down to Texas to hang with, um, you know, Dirty Kid and the boys. Um, And then just being able to travel and shoot and and just hang, you know, like, 
the the relationship is important so mm-hmm. like if i don't pick up a rifle and shoot while i'm on those trips cool if we sit around and you know smoke cigars and you know drink bourbon and and eat tacos i'm cool with that too because it's about the homies you mm-hmm. know so like i'm really excited to see what's you know coming up so yeah i mean it's it'll be cool man it'll be kind of cool to see kind of how it builds and how it grows and stuff and start seeing you some pick in some pictures across the across the mm-hmm. nation with all these cool dudes so lots mm-hmm. of fun lots I'm excited. of excited yeah but um but yeah so um instagram wise what is what is the instagram handle as well for zero legion just while i have it so uh zero legion so it's uh z-e-r zero l-e-g-i-o-n that's the instagram tag um Someone took zero legion, so I had to throw the O in there. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's always it's always one thing, especially those. It's like the that's the one thing you have to kind of like <laughs> finesse and move around and try and build, and then finally get that one, and then you're like, okay, I gotta save this thing. And you know, right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Always fun, always fun. But uh, but yeah, man. So well, um, one, it's it's been it's been awesome hearing some of your story and and kind of getting a little bit more of a feel and thought of, of behind zero legion as well, but also some of the mantra behind it. Uh, What's is there anything like coming up like in the immediate future that you're excited about? Obviously, you just did that one release and um, have the pre order with the mob shirt, and then you had one before that too. So, what is uh, yeah, yeah. Um, the the one thing that I can say that I'm really excited. Um, so, after the pre order with the shirts get out, um, my next drop is is uh, kind of something I really like. Um, uh, my boy over at FUD is a wizard with uh, designs. Mm-hmm. And so he came up with something I think people are pretty much pumped about. So uh, as a teaser, I think um, if anyone's watched The Godfather, um, the one thing I can say is uh, don't be Fredo. And <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll leave it at that. Yeah. What, what, so even on that aspect, are there any, speak just in, in the terms of, of Italian, stuff like that, what's, what is something that you relate to or you really enjoy? Or is it some, or even something that, you think is too stereotypical or gets re gets used too, too much. Oh man. Um, oh shit. I mean, you could go on for days on that one too. It, yeah. Yeah. I, I listen, I, obviously my accent has kind of, uh, softened a little bit. Yeah. Um, just because of me being out here and not being around others that speak like me. Um, <laughs> so, but back in the day it was a stigma. Like people would come out to Vegas and, you know, or they'd leave where they're from and they would try and talk different. And, you know, out here, you know, with the day and age, it separates me from most people. So mm-hmm. I, I try not to use, uh, lose it. But, you know, listen, if I had a dollar for every time that someone sent me a DM that said, forget about it, you know, I would I would be probably <laughs> wouldn't have to drop anything to pay the bills. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, Everything, most of the things that people send me, it's it, it is the Italian culture. I mean, yeah. we do that. We do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like this is how we are. You know. Um, so I mean, I can't really say that there's one thing that people send me that I'm like, God, man, I just wish this wasn't a part of our culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm gonna say it is. It's it's a very cool. I mean, I say there's never. It's never. From what I've seen, it's normally never used in a bad light. It's always just how either dramatized or you know Hollywood's impact or. Or etc. I mean, you know, some of the one of, if not some of the best TV shows that's ever ever aired is still considered The Sopranos. Sopranos is considered one yeah. of the best shows ever. Uh, same thing with my, you know, some of the old school mob movies are all classics in, in that aspect. And you know, so yeah, it's it's very cool. Like I said, but um, but yeah, so I'll just curious. Yeah, curious. and that's what's co- that's what's cool about the brand is because it's like you know, I'm watching a lot, yeah, I watched every episode of Sopranos. I I've never rewatched it again. Yeah. But it's like, you know, I, because I loved it and I enjoyed it and, you know, um, but now it's like, okay, I need to rewatch The Sopranos because, you know, I just rewatched The Godfather again and, you know, there's something in The Godfather that I'm going to release. There's actually a few things. And, you know, it, it's so getting my ideas from that, it's cool because now it's like, okay, you know, talk to what, hey, we're having movie night. And well, what are we watching? Oh, you know, we're going to watch all the seasons of Sopranos. So we're going to watch the guy. And mm-hmm. luckily enough, shit, I come in and, you know, my wife's Greek. She's not Italian. Um, and I come in and she's watching, you know, Goodfellas or she's watching Casino. And, you know, I, I can't change the channel. 
and we've watched it a million times. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, hey, babe, can we change it? Nope, nope, we've watched this to the end, you know? And it's like, <laughs> you know, which is which is cool. I mean, these movies are iconic, and regardless of whether you're, you know, whatever race you are, I mean, people enjoy that shit. It's oh, yeah. fun. It's cool. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just, it's definitely a, and I mean, not for nothing, I mean, uh, whether you agreed with them or not, I mean, uh, Mafia did some shit in this country. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and some people say that the country was better when they were around, you know? Yeah, I don't know. That's true. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But um, <laughs> on, on that aspect, and too, so outside of, of Zero Legion and, you know, the, the, the nine to five, the quote unquote nine to five. Um, what's what? What are some other things that you that you do, or you find ways of like decompressing? Because obviously, having constant communication, to, you know, constant interactions. Like, what's something that you've found to, to you know, just to decompress and relax some? Yeah, I mean, me and my wife have, um, you know, from time to time. What I didn't realize is coming from the East Coast, you know, I miss the green, I miss the trees, mm -hmm. you know. So like, we spent a lot of time in New Hampshire. I went to college in Maine, and you know, so I I was around the skiing and the hiking and like the like the trails and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, but so when you come to Vegas, it's like we're in the desert. You know, how much of the hiking and the stuff that can you do? Like, um, so you know, I one day I downloaded the All Trails app, and I'm like, holy shit, you're telling me. Yeah. within five minutes of me there's 160 trails oh, yeah, that's, and it's that's like cool. yeah so it's like i'm literally right next to red rock canyon so you know me and my wife we we've we don't do it as much as we like but you know to be able to get out there and hike and now that i'm taking you know uh, into photography and shit now i can bring my camera so we've mm -hmm. been going on hikes here and there and the great thing about going on hikes is there's no service so I don't have to, you know, I, ca I carry a personal phone and a work phone and, you know, I don't have, you know, my phone going off every two seconds. So it's not like I'm attached to this thing. So I can actually just get out there and kind of just decompress and just not do anything other than be in that moment, which mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a good way for you to be able to connect with your significant other too. I mean, mm -hmm. same thing. That's, that's, that's one thing that I've found that I've really enjoyed, especially when, like you said, there is no service and there is no, or, you know, uh, I'm sure with the, there's no, you know, constant pinging or anything like that, whether it be social media, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice, mm -hmm. it's a nice escape. Nice escape. Yeah. So, excited. and I was going to say, so, uh, I was trying to get it out of you, but there was also someone else that we both mutually, uh, appreciate and enjoy, enjoy watching. And, uh, so I know at one point I know you were you're playing some games and stuff like that, but uh, oh, okay, you, yeah. I know you're a, a fan of uh, of the Doctor, dude. So, dude, Champions Club is in my go. blood. Yeah, dude. You so, know, so when, when how did you how did you stumble upon uh, Doctor Disrespect? How did that how did that come um, about? So I at work, um, you know. Um, dude, I've always lived with uh, VSM my whole life. So violent yeah. speed momentum. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely a mantra that I, I live with, you know. And um, I was working out. I, I have ADHD, and um, I wasn't diagnosed with it until later. And I'm, I'm I don't pop pills, so you know the the whole Ritalin and Adderall and all that other shit. Like I just never got into it. So with me, it's like I kind of this is why you know. I'll throw, a, you know, fucking Copenhagen in because it gives me something mm -hmm. to do while I'm doing other stuff. And so, you know, I started putting on my buddy at work was like, hey, you got to check this guy out. And I'm like, dude, what do you mean? Like, what's he got on his on his on his uh, lip? And he's like, oh, that's the Ethiopian caterpillar. <laughs> and I'm like, what the? what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, this is Dr. Disrespect. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then I'm huge. You know, I'm huge into, you know, um. A Call of Duty, so I've been playing that, you know, for forever. And um, like first-person shooters, I love. Mm -hmm. And you know, I used to play a lot of G, um, GTA and all that. And so um, he, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you just, you know. And it's funny because back in the day when I worked at Planet Hollywood, I had this one kid that was like, he was a big player of mine, and he's like, yeah, I think I'm, you know, gonna start doing this. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, I'm just gonna stream while I'm playing video games. And I'm like, dude, that's the fucking stupidest idea ever. <laughs> and I'm like, it, you know, fast forward to now. I wish I did it because yeah. I mean these guys like Cloaksy and and Tim and Doc. I mean they're making they, it's just entertainment. So yeah. he got me into watching Doc. And so what I would do is when I come into work, I'd be doing my work, but I I'd, I'd have my headphones in and I'd have his stream up and I would just be watching him as I'm doing my own work. And dude, just to get a kick out of life, man. Like he's seriously like I, I and and I respect him, you know, because you know the whole you know this country. I mean we can. I don't want to talk about politics, but sure, you know, sure. obviously, um, but 
um, you know, with this whole country the way it is, and you know, you get the skins that come out, and you know, and uh, Nick Nick Merks mm -hmm. says something, and the next you know they pull his skin, and you know, for Doc and Tim to be like, you know, literally people go watch Tim and Doc to watch them play Call of Duty, which, you know, obviously a lot of people in this world watch that over other games. Mm -hmm. They literally were like, I'm not streaming this. I'm 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 taking it off my computer until you guys either do something about this. And like I thought that was, you know, kinda cool for them to actually stand with Nick. And it was it was funny, like um, I don't know Nick, and I would love to know Nick. I like watching his streams too. But I just saw he had a, a golf tournament here at TPC Summerlin, nice. and a few of my a few of my homies, uh, you know, members at TPC Summerlin. I play there a lot, and I'm like, damn man, I wish I would have gotten that golf tournament, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, dude, I love Doc, and I, you know, you know this because I sent you the picture. I got his, you know, shaker, and yeah, yeah. you know, every every morning when I make a protein shake, it's in that uh, Doc disrespect shaker. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, man, that's uh, I'm about to say it's it's very cool to have like all these little like little symbiotic, you know, mutual things that we both really enjoy without it being like front and center or, or, or you know, stumbling on it, which I think is just, you know, it just adds a, a nice, really cool twist to, to the relationship and everything like that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what, though, we will be running some games once the new one comes out oh, because yeah. I kind of I haven't turned my PS5 on in probably about six months. So I probably have a six hour update uh, next time I turn <laughs> yeah. it on. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward. You know, I just it, it, it gives me an opportunity to get away from the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, if, if my homies are on there, it's even better because now I have someone to shoot the shit with. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wish I had these relationships pre COVID because I didn't build these relationships till during COVID and after COVID because, you know, I played a shit ton of call of duty during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I know there would have been a lot more people to run games with then, uh, you know, if I knew them. Um, but yeah, I'm always down to run something. Yeah, absolutely. I'm about to say, yeah, I'm about to say, I've been, I've been hearing more and more about the newest one. So, and that's like one of those things. If for me, I'm definitely like a social gamer. Like I, I enjoy playing mm -hmm. games, but if I'm able to play with some friends, that's what like the, the sweet spot is. Cause like, you know, we don't even have to win as long as like there's some banter and some bullshit going right. on. Yeah. That's what, that's and what I'm, I'm lucky fun. because the dudes I play with, like some of the kids I play with, like at the casino, I work at, like we do really good with the, um, you know, we have a uh, exchange program and a mm -hmm. um, internship with uh, Michigan State. So a lot of the kids that come work for us uh, just graduated from Michigan State, you know, and so, you know, I know they play games and stuff. So, you know, I, luckily enough, I'm pretty good at, you know, um, Call of Duty and, you know, sniping and, you know, mm -hmm. CQB, all that shit. I'm like, I'm decent, you know, with my movement and slide canceling and all that shit. Um, but these young kids, like I run, you know, in with <laughs> these guys and it's like, Man, like I'll get a dub here and there, but I jump in and like, what do you mean we're on? You know, four, you know, we're trying to get a nuke, and you know, we're on four dubs, and it's like these kids are just unreal with these video games, and it's crazy. <laughs> kids these days are playing Call of Duty like at some whole other level and stuff. So unbelievable, insane, insane. But dude, um, like I said, I know you've got other things today, and Monday being your day off, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. And again, I appreciate you coming on and telling a little bit about your story and what you've got and what all you're offering and stuff. So yeah, thank you again, man. Yeah, Max, I, dude, I appreciate you because like I said, in the industry, I mean, I'm just kind of relatively new. I've made some really good connections. And um, I mean, me and you just started talking mm -hmm. about two, two, three weeks ago. And I definitely appreciate the opportunity to come on your podcast. I, I've been streaming your podcast since we've talked every time I'm in the vehicle. So I definitely, definitely wicked pump to, you know, to be on this and, you know, uh, be able to tell my story and, you know, let people get to know me a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, again, uh, looking forward to when we're able to actually meet up and we'll do the next one in person and uh, I'm sure we'll yeah, uh, cross some yeah. paths in person as well. So, but yeah, man, but, but before I forget, before we go ahead and cut it off, we'll go ahead and do one more reminder of your, your Instagram handle and then your website as well. Yeah. So, um, my Instagram is zero legion, so that's Z E R zero L E G I O N. Uh, the website is www dot zero legion. That's Z E R O L E G I O N dot com, and uh, that's pretty much where you can find me. I have not on anything else right now, but awesome. uh, we'll see what comes in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll have all that linked and everything in the podcast description and information. Information, so you don't have to worry about trying to remember that stuff as well. But it's fresh in your mind. Again, thank you so much, Mike, for, for hopping on, and we'll, I'm sure we'll do another, another episode sometime soon.
Yeah, maybe in the next episode we do it down uh, at Barry's yeah, in front cool. of uh, a filet. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, man. Thank you so much, and then have a good rest of your day. All right, you too, buddy. Thank you.